Hello, I'm Madge Weinstein of YeastRadio.com, and this thing is Justin Polera of PulpIsTaken.com, and you are watching The Untitled Show, which brings you the goings-on in the world and in the arts. First, I got a boil on my ass that needs to be lanced, and his name is George W. Bush. On Sunday, the moronic, neoconservative, paranoid Bush administration bombed Syria. You heard me, Syria. I guess W couldn't get his rocks off by bombing Iran because they would have lit the Gulf on fire, so instead, Bush got the equivalent of fellatio from the Joint Chiefs of Staff by attacking a farm in eastern Syria. Eight civilians were killed, Syria's news agency reported. Four helicopters crossed into Syria carrying U.S. troops. The Bush administration has accused Syria of not doing enough to help stop anti-American forces from crossing the Iraqi border even though it's the U.S. that's in charge of the Iraqi border. The Bush administration officials will likely retire soon and write books about how bad Bush was so they can make money and endorse Democrats. Putzes. Death row prisoner Troy Anthony Davis has been granted yet another stay of execution, this time three days before his scheduled execution. Seven of nine of the non-police witnesses who originally testified against Davis have recanted their testimony. Several of these witnesses claim that police actually coerced them into testifying against Davis. The 11th Circuit Court of Appeals in, George gave da in Georgia gave Davis's lawyers 15 days to file documents with the court. These documents support the claims that Davis is wrongfully being held. This is ridiculous and has been going on way too long. Please go to Amnesty International's website and learn how you can help not only Troy Davis, but all death penalty prisoners in general. Nobody has the right to kill, not even the state, especially not the state. Comedian Jerry Lewis, who hasn't been funny since about 19... Flavin de Hyven de Two, made another extremely offensive homophobic slur. Lewis, who currently looks like my dead Aunt Mary, was asked on Australian television for his opinion on the sport of cricket. Lewis replied, quote, Oh, cricket? That's a faggot game. What are you, nuts? This is the second time in the past two years that Lewis has used an anti-gay slur on television. Why do we tolerate this drunken tranny mess? Even the newspaper of Alaska's largest city did not endorse the venomous McCain Palin ticket. Even more damning is the reason the Anchorage Daily News did not endorse McCain was because of Governor Palin's presence on the ticket. The paper said, quote, few have who have worked closely with the governor would argue that she is truly ready to assume the command of the most important, powerful nation on earth, you guys. So please tell me, audience, if the people she currently governs don't think she's qualified to be vice president, then how can you not be an idiot and vote for these people? By the way, the Financial Times also endorsed Obama for president recently. Oh, and another thing about Governor Palin I wanted to mention. Just how wicked is a woman who would name her retarded child after a math class, bitch? The United Nations reports that the gap between the rich and the poor continues to expand at an alarming rate. A UN report revealed that several major US cities, including New York, Washington, Atlanta, and New Orleans, have levels of inequality that rival cities in Africa. And this is supposed to be the greatest country in the world. In terms of what, porn? Well, that's it for me, and now it's time for Justin. As soon as uh, we adjust and trade, I'll trade you the keyboard for the dog. Here we go. Excellent. Get snapping, suppress the space bar, and get started while I play with my dog's behave. And just... In Brazil, the 28th Biennial of Sao Paulo opened to critical acclaim and confusion. The Biennial is the second largest art show in the world of its kind. It is the largest art event in Latin America. Sao Paulo Biennial features the work of 42 artists from 21 countries. This biennial is smaller than last year's, partly because there's less funding, and partly because the curators wanted to create an innovation. The new innovation was leaving the main space empty with no art at all. The Latin American Biennial is often overshadowed by its bigger European brother, the Venice Biennial. But this year's exhibition, titled Envifo Cotato, or Live Contact, is small for a reason. The curators transform the exhibition space into a void where artists can come together and perform publicly. The public space as art exhibition is also a radical idea pointing to a change in the art world. In the midst of global economic downturn, the void exhibition is a celebration of new possibilities for public art. In the perpetually unstable Latin American political arena, the biennial remains the only constant.
In 2003, when Olga Viso, then director of the Hirshhorn Museum in Washington, D.C., was asked who are the most underrated artists, she named several important women and Latin American artists. Now, with exhibitions around the world focusing on women in Latin America, those artists are finally getting the attention they deserve. Viso stated the contribution of Cieldo Mireles to conceptual art has not yet been fully acknowledged. Five years later, Mireles has a solo exhibition at the Tate Modern in London. Viso also named Ana Mandieta, Jesus, Rafael Soto, and Guillermo Cucha. Mandieta had a retrospective at the Whitney Museum of Art in 2006, but that exhibition left much untold. Unseen Mandieta is a new book by Viso. This is her first book as newly named director of the Walker Art Center. The book explores previously unpublished photographs and drawings tracing Mandieta's roots back to Cuba. In Gothenburg, Sweden, the Mexican photographer Graciela Iturbide receives the 2008 Hasselblad Award. The international award is granted to a photographer for a lifetime achievement. Iturbide is considered one of the most important Latin American artists in the past four decades. Her photography captures everyday moments in the life of Mexicans. The visual power and beauty of Iturbide's photos elevate documentary photography to fine art. In Florida, the Miami Art Museum announced it will premiere the first comprehensive survey of Guillermo Cucha. The Argentine-born artist has spent the past two decades exploring social space in painting. Cucha is a major influence in contemporary painting. The exhibition titled Everything will trace the evolution of Cucha's work through 50 large-scale paintings. Cucha's paintings explore the intersection of public and private spaces, as well as dislocation. In New York City, the young Brazilian artist Beatrice Mihels is taking the city by storm. She has a solo exhibition at James Cohen Gallery, as well as three limited edition projects. Mihels has a tapestry, a uh, textile, as well as an artist book. She recently created an installation in the windows of the Contemporary Art Museum in Tokyo. Her work comes out of a long tradition of Latin American abstract painting, and it captures the motifs of modernism through the lens of a Brazilian. Okay, well, that was great. Now, I want everybody to make sure and vote for Barack Obama and take your little, and I'm serious here because there's vote rigging going on already. There's reports of this. Take your little webcam thing, your fo phone, and videotape you're making the vote, especially if you have one of those electronic voting machines. So if something goes wrong, you can prove it. Video your vote dot, uh, there's a site, videoyourvote.org or dot com. Thank you. Did we give out the website address? No. What is it? Please send your comments and questions to pulpistaken at gmail.com. Please do, and let us know how to improve the show and what you think. And go vote, or you'll end up with a cucumber in your rectum.